Well, I think the first level of scale is make it everyone's priority. Right, again, if you have a small team somewhere, if it's only customer success or it's only someone in marketing that they're trying to create a following in social media, that's not going to work. It has to be in every experience that the customer has with every member of the team that the person talking to them, and it could be on the business side, it could be on the support side, it could be, you know, your finance team that is working with customers to, you know, to get them to pay. Right. If they're providing that, that customer with a great experiences, even if there's disagreements or there's things that we need to get fixed, uh, this is the number one way to scale this because it's genuine. It happens consistently across the board from your first conversation with the customer. The first time you actually encounter the brand, the first time that you talk to an SDR, to a salesperson, to a customer success, it's very consistent along the way. That's the number one way to scale this. I'm Devin Reed. And I'm Sheena Badani. And you're watching Reveal, the revenue intelligence podcast powered by Gong. Keep watching here to see the full interview. Or if you like to listen to podcasts on the go, check out the links in the description below. And if you like what you hear, subscribe on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, or Spotify, or all of them. Why not? And while you're there, make sure to leave us a five-star review. We personally read every single one, and I think I speak for both of us when I say they mean the world to us. Could not agree more, Devin. Now, without further ado, here's the episode you've been waiting for. Aran, there are many ways that I like to spend my Friday afternoons, but I'll be honest, hanging out with you is topping that list. I am thrilled to have you on Reveal. Thank you for joining us. Well, thank you. This really is going to be the highlight of my week. I'm so excited to be here. I love it. I love it. I tell Sheena all the time, this is the highlight of our jobs. The fact that we get to interview executives, learn and uh, learn a bunch along the way. It doesn't get much better than that. Um, so we have our topic teed up. But before we get into that, I just want to learn a little bit more about you and kind of set the stage. So, you know, we're going to talk about customer success a bit. Can you just kind of share what customer success means to you and what your customer success team does at Gong? Yeah. I mean, one of the reasons I love customer success is that it really connects two things that I'm really passionate about. One is the product side, which was where I really started my career. And the other part is the revenue and the go to market, um, you know, motion, which is something that frankly, I came close to only in the past 10 or 15 years of my career. Um, if you think about SaaS companies, uh, you deliver value to your customer through the product and through customer success. It's all part of the same motion. It's uh, super exciting to see customers get value and get excited about uh, what you're doing. And it connects really well to how do we generate revenue? How do we keep our customers? How can we help them grow together with us? And that's really what excites me about, uh, about this motion. And um, my team really owns that piece of the puzzle, right? Basically, once you become a Gong customer, our customer success team, support team, services teams, education, all of those motions are a part of my org. And uh, they are the ones who help uh, make sure we help create value to our customers. Love it. You guys do so much hard work and so dedicated and focused on each and every one of our customers. It's so, so important. Um, so at Gong, we have this concept of raving fans and creating raving fans out of our customers and every actually every touch point that we have externally and internally. Um, I'd love to hear a little bit more in your own words, like what is a raving fan and how do you identify these people? Yeah. And you know, a funny story about our operating principles, we never said that this was our first or number one or the most important operating principle. It just became to be, this is how everyone talks about it. And I think part of it is because it's everyone's favorite one maybe, or the ones that they feel the closest to, which is amazing. Um, to me, a raving fan is someone who really goes out of their way to support you, to you know, tie their career together with your success. It becomes very personal for them. So the level of excitement, of alignment, of investments um, that they make um, are just, you know, outsized to what you'd expect from, from anyone else. Um, 
And that's really what we're aiming for, right? To create that amazing experience, that uh, surprise and delight experience to our customers and to every single user. So Iran, how do you and the team identify these raving fans? So I, I think the, the first thing is actually they identify themselves. Um, and I tend to say, like, if you need to really look for your raving fans, then you have a problem because a lot of times they would raise their hand and they would come to you and they would send you an email and they would volunteer to do something for you or they would send their friends to check you out or whatever that may be. Um, and I think that's really the, the first signal that you have uh, in your business that you're doing something that kind of amounts to that experience. Um, but we are looking at a lot of different metrics to see how we track. Uh, really the one that we track all the time and that we do at the biggest scale is NPS. We send NPS to every user who's been active within the platforms. We check on users uh, more than once a year to make sure that it's trending in the right direction. And we look at that data very, very closely. Um, but we're also looking at things like what is the level of engagement of our user base with us on social? How many people actually care about what we have to say? Um, how many people send us feedback for our product or suggest, you know, um, feedback around our process or people that reach out to us and they just want to learn what is it that we do that's so great, right? So. Uh, NPS is definitely the one that we track in the most religious way, uh, but there are a lot of other touch points that we're looking at to to have a pulse on this. Yeah, I love that. Um, you know, you know if you have raving fans because they come to you, they surface themselves, but they can surface themselves in different ways. So, you know, it could be on different channels. It could be uh, maybe even behind the scenes where they're talking to their friends and, and uh, you know, kind of word of mouth. Um, spreading that gospel in that manner as well. Yeah, and you know, for us, um, we highlight raving fans every time we have like a, what we call Gang of Gong, right? The, the all hands meeting that we have. And the challenge we have is that just choosing a few out of the dozens we get all the time. And we, we get them through our NPS surveys and just emails or, you know, gong calls where people just completely rave and, and uh, just put themselves out there. And that's a huge part of what we're looking to see, that it's it comes natural, it's something people, we don't have to prod them too much, right? You just have to open the door and they'll come in. Yeah, Shane, you heard the same thing, which is uh, interesting about self-identifying, they'll, they'll find you. I think a lot of times, uh, usually they find you, but they're unhappy fans or they're not really fans, right? It's where people go to social media and say, uh, this thing didn't work the right way or this experience wasn't good. So it's kind of the inverse of that, which I think around some people could hear, you know, raving fans sounds great. Cool, I'd love to have some, but maybe my business is doing fine without them or it sounds like a nice to have. Why is creating raving fans so important to business success? Well, I think if you really want to build something big and you want something that sustains itself, I mean, obviously you need to have a product that adds value to your customers. Um, but how can you build such a successful service or product if you don't have the vested interests of your customers to help you get there? It's really hard to get to product market fit if your customers are not excited about what you're doing and then help guide you towards success. And as you grow, right, it's very easy when the team is big, um, you know, how do you know that you're doing the right things? How do you know that your customers are happy? You can measure that. But again, your customers are the ones that would add the color. They would give you the advice. They are the ones who help you correct the way. And sometimes, you know, the most vocal customers are actually your biggest raving fans. They care so much that they'll come to you and they'll just ask you to do things in a way that would help them do even better. Um, one of the most frightening things with a customer is that a customer that has doesn't want to do anything with you. They don't want to give you any feedback. They don't want to tell you what they're doing. Right. You don't know if they're happy or not. So I think that's one thing. The other thing is if you think about, especially if you think about creating a category, you want those customers. And at the end of the day, it's people. It's you and me. Like they would move to a different role or they would move to a different company. They're the ones that would bring you to their next 
role and they're the ones who would help you overcome difficulties. Um, so to me, this is one of the force multipliers that many companies don't intentionally look for. And if you don't have that, then you know every new customer, it's, it's a new knife fight, right? You have to win every user and every person again and again and again. But if you have that core, you know, cohort of people that are really excited about you, they would help you in a way that um, no one else can. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, we see it in all parts of the business. I know us being on, on marketing. I mean, we've had ideas come from raving fans, not even people who use Gong necessarily, Some sometimes clients, sometimes just fans. And, you know, we've had research ideas for our Gong Lab series. We've had podcast title, you know, uh, guests, people saying, hey, you should, you know, interview our, our SVP and all these other things. And it's kind of like, it, it makes all things easier. It's kind of like the, bl the blanket way that I see it. And I think, you know, you could go to marketing, you look, look at sales, uh, you know, getting customer referrals in the middle of a sales process, all those different things. When, like you said, you, you've unlocked that raving fan experience or that, you know, that, that word of mouth, which is really just how it kind of takes shape. Yeah, the big difference is, are you going against the grain or do you have other people pushing you forward? Mm -hmm. And that's really the a huge difference, right? Are you fighting the fight every time or do you actually have people that help you do better? Not just your own team, but, you know, the entire community around you. So I've got a question, Ryan. You've, uh, you know, you've been around the block a couple of times and I mean that in the best way possible. You've got some good experience under your belt, but this is i'm guessing the first time you've worked at a company that has this raving fan you know dna what and so you know no knock on previous companies you've worked for what prevents companies from adopting this yeah i mean i've been with companies where we had something like this not to the extent not anywhere near to the extent that we have it here um i think it's it's not something that you can fake right it's either it's really important to the company and it's something that comes really from within, from the founders, from the, the team that is really genuine and, and natural, or that it's something that, you know, there's one person or one team in a company that's trying to do something, but they're really, they're on their own. I think that's one of the biggest differences because it's, it's like a relationship with, just think about your friends, think about your family. You can't just, you know, not stay in touch with people, not support them when they need you. And then when you need something, expect them to, you know, just be happy to see you and do, you know, do things for you, right? It's it's about building that relationship. It's really caring about adding value to those customers and creating an amazing experience for them. I think that's really the core. Um, and this is where I saw it working versus in places where a lot of good intentions, but it, it didn't have the foundation to allow it to really uh, be successful. That's I can also imagine that like when you think about raving fans, you're thinking of, um, you know, all positive experiences where, you know, it's a company is giving you love and showering you with compliments for your product or for your services. But there are probably times when your raving fans are real with you and they may actually be providing you feedback where you could be doing better. Um, so I'm curious, like, if you've had any instances, you know, either at Gong or before where it was these raving fans that was actually driving you to do something um, in an even better way. A hundred percent. And I would actually say that the number one value of raving fans is actually telling you, what are you doing wrong? Where can you do better? Where do we want you to go? Um, I love products and services where customers start using them in completely different way than they were intended. Right. And they push you in directions that you may not have even imagined that you'll go. Um, I think that level of honesty is crucial and it's crucial in both ways. Right. Um, I, a few examples from Gong. We have customers who are using the product in ways that were not intended and may not be the ways that we would invest in in the, you know, in the near future. And it's about having that conversation with the customer. This is amazing. We'd love to support you as much as we can, but this is not where we're going. We'll be happy to help you figure it out. But I think that level of alignment and honesty is, is crucial. Um, as it is the other way, I mentioned earlier, sometimes customers are really passionate and it could be uh, scary sometimes to talk to someone who's 
like so passionate. They're explaining to you, what are you doing wrong? You should do this this way versus that way. This is one of the best experiences you can have as a company, right? Um, this is how you learn. This is how you get better. Um, and this is one, one thing that our team really loves. It could be on at the time, it could be hard, but you know that the customer is meaning well. They, they want you to be successful. Um, and that's why they're so vested in your success. Mm -hmm. Well, in comparison to what you said before, the worst thing is you get no feedback, nothing positive, nothing uh, negative. And so you're left making decisions in a vacuum, you know, within your company, hoping you're making the right choice. Exactly. So Ron, let's get into the how a little bit here. So you shared, you know, it starts at the top, right? And I, I think of it too, when you say our, our all hands is called Gang of Gong. Uh, I can't imagine a time, I can't think of one where Amit or Kelly, our president, has not said raving fans in one of those calls, if not multiple times, and not in a like, all right, now it's, you know, slide changes. It's time for raving fans segment. It's like, no, this is part of our vernacular. It, it's like, you know, it's it's part of our, our lexicon. And like you said, our company DNA. So I, I get that it starts there at the top. Let's say that box is checked. How do you create raving fans at scale? Well, I think the first level of scale is make it everyone's priority, right? Again, if you have a small team somewhere, if it's only customer success or it's only someone in marketing that they're trying to create a following in social media, that's not going to work. It has to be in every experience that the customer has with every member of the team that the person talking to them, and it could be on the business side, it could be on the support side, it could be, you know, your finance team that is working with customers to, you know, to get them to pay, right? If they're providing that, that customer with a great experiences, even if there's disagreements or there's things that we need to get fixed, uh, this is the number one way to scale this because it's genuine. It happens consistently across the board from your first conversation with the customer. The first time you actually encounter the brand, the first time that you talk to an SDR, to a salesperson, to a customer success, it's very consistent along the way. That's the number one way to scale this. I think beyond that, it's about decision-making every step of the way. If the business is or your customer is going through a rough time, what are you going to do about it? How much do you actually take that principle and apply it to decision-making along the way? COVID was a great example uh, for many companies that had to really make those decisions. Are we actually honestly there for our customers or was this just a slogan, um, you know, that doesn't mean anything when, you know, the going gets tough? Um, so I think that's the, that's the number one way. The other way is obviously putting some measurements, putting some process around it, making sure that we actually take the feedback and do something about it. So I would say the level of engagement come from every single person in your team, every single touch point. But then you actually have to listen and you have to do something about it, Right. So if you're getting product feedback from your customers and not doing anything about it, that's not going to scale because it's going to be a black hole of feedback that goes nowhere. So you have to have that virtuous cycle in order to create that scale, that it's not one person and it goes nowhere. Um, I think that's that's really the number one way to, to scale this. Um you mentioned measurement, like that's like one part of scaling this experience. And then we talked about NPS earlier. Are there other metrics or ways that you are able to identify like when this raving fan experience is working or not? Yeah, um, there are a few different ways, right? One, um, we mentioned NPS, obviously a great one. Um, you can measure what is the level of engagement you have with your executives in in the different accounts right uh, again if you don't have raving fans a lot of times customers don't really engage with you right even if things are going well and sometimes when things are not going well so what is the level of engagement with your customers along their journey um, you can look uh, if you have a platform like a community or an academy where customers can come and learn more you can see are they actually engaging with your team and with each other if you don't have that core experience, a lot of times customers 
I mean, everyone's busy. People don't have time to engage with a community of a, cost, of a company that they don't really care about that much. Um, you can see how much, how many features do they suggest, right? Uh, if you have a, a way to measure that. Um, you can see how many of the features that they suggest actually make their way into the product roadmap, right? And it's a great measurement actually to how much are you willing to invest back in your customers. Um, so there's a variety of different ways and different companies may have different levels of touch points, but the way to think about it is think about the touch points that are optional for the customer, right? I mean, if you're trying to get the customer to engage with you, if there's a new renewal coming, maybe they have to engage with you, but just during their life cycle, no one asks, like people are busy and they probably have dozens of systems that they're using. They choose to engage with some versus the others. So everything that customers are doing that are optional, this is what you should be measuring. That's a super interesting way um, about looking at it. They are taking the time out of their personal life, their professional life to engage with a CSM or to attend a webinar or to go to one of your events. Like that's a huge ask. Exactly. You know, people don't have to do that right. at all. So that Events are a great way, right? Um, you know, how, how oversubscribed is your event? Like, are you struggling to get people to come or are you just struggling to find a big enough space or a platform that can handle the load? Which is interesting too, because there's a difference between brand and what you're describing. Brand could be general population, people knowing of you, wanting to, you know, interact with you. But yours is like, you could throw a customer event. If you throw just a customer event, you only promote it to customers. Brand doesn't have a lot to do. I mean, it's a part of what we're talking about, raving fans, but it's not the whole thing. You can't just say, well, we have a good or strong, you know, good or bad brand. And that's why our customers aren't showing up, right? Because if they're doing all the things you're talking yeah. about and, you know, using the product, giving feedback, positive, negative, there's a higher likelihood they'll want to show up to that event to continue, like you said, that flywheel and be, and be part of it. Exactly. So aside from events, Aran, is there any maybe, uh, you know, special example that sticks out in your mind where you, you or maybe your team have created raving fans? Um, there's a lot. Uh, we get inbound all the time, but we've had crazy. Um, we had customers creating videos and sending them to us with, you know, them uh, taking um, memes out of our own messaging and, you know, creating a video about it or um, almost like doing a comedy skit around what does it mean for them to use Gong and, you know, their journey along the way. Um, there are crazy things out there. We've had calls where jokingly customers said, you know what, if Gong was a person, I would marry <laughs> Gong, right? Those type of moments where we, we just love those moments. We share them all the time. You know, you know, it's genuine, right? Because, you know, if you're on a call with someone, you may give them a compliment, but people don't come up with that, <laughs> with that level of enthusiasm to anyone. Um, some of them are really out there, but a lot, they're so genuine and funny and, and exciting that uh, um, this is exactly what you should be looking for. So, Iran, I have a question um, that will help guide all of our listeners, especially those that may not be living and breathing um, customer success every day, but what can professionals do regardless of what function they're in to keep the customer front and center and always have that raving fan in mind? To me, raving fan is a goal, but it's also an outcome, right? I, I mean, if you really care about your customers, you really need to care about engaging with them, right? I've seen product teams that really care about their customers, but they're not actually talking to the customer. You can argue that for us in Gong, we use Gong for everything. You can argue that our product team doesn't need to talk to customers. They can just right. listen to calls, but they talk to customers all the time, much more than any product team that I've seen. So, but it's not enough just to talk to customers. It actually influences what we do in a very, very deep way. So if you want to create that experience, it's actually like a lot of things in life, it's hard to do, but it's actually really simple. Engage with your customers, show that you care and do something about it. And if you do that, your customers would see that. And it doesn't mean that you have to do whatever they ask you to do, but just be honest, take the feedback, 
have a conversation and sometimes the answer will be, you know, this is not something that we thought that we are planning to invest in or we can't do that and here's why. People appreciate honesty, your customers appreciate honesty, they know that you're on their side even if the answer is no and they appreciate that. So I think it really starts from fu fundamentals and every person in a company can create that experience. The magic happens when you don't need to start, you don't need to explain that to every person in your company because they just get that from everyone around them. It's just how things are getting done and you just don't have to reinforce that anymore. Yeah, it was interesting. I was just about to ask, how do you avoid the customer's always right mentality, which I think kind of comes from, I don't know, maybe that's retail or not, but you know, which is like, okay, cust you know, I need to make raving fans. That means do whatever they say all the time, which could send you in a million different directions on a daily basis. So I think you kind of just covered it. Is there anything else maybe that you guide your team around specifically? Cause you know, in success, you do get, a, you get a lot of feedback. You get a lot of asks. Sometimes they're off the wall. Good. Sometimes they're off the wall different. Uh, and you know, you can't, you can't, uh, you know, achieve all of them. Is there a way that you maybe coach or guide your team? Yeah, I think first of all, I mean, there is something to be said about the customer is always right, right? And it's it's not that they always write about what you should be doing, but they're always right in reflecting their mm -hmm. own point of view, right? So you assume the customer yeah. is telling you the truth, which why wouldn't they, right? Um, then it's it, then from that point on, it's just a conversation, right? They are trying to achieve something, and sometimes we may have gaps, or maybe we didn't do something that they expected us to do that's totally fine. It doesn't necessarily mean that we have to do exactly what they're asking us for. First of all, because it would actually be bad sure. for them, yeah. right? Because they may not have the full picture. There's some experience that we have. We're working with thousands of other companies. Um, so customers always right doesn't mean do whatever the customer is asking you to do, right? And I think uh, that's a huge the kind of leap that some companies think about if we think the customer is right, it means that we're not doing the right thing. We're just doing what the customer is asking us to do. Um, I think if you have empathy for the customer, if you listen and you're transparent with the customer, that's really the foundation for almost everything um, that you need to don't create that culture and that reaction from your customers. What I would say that I've seen a lot of times that best intentions don't really work is this, okay, this quarter, we're going to create raving fans. We're going to invest. We're going to do something this quarter and everything's going to be fine. Those one-time initiatives never work. You have to commit to that for the long term. And it's something like a little bit like brand building. You would not see the results immediately. Those results go very deep, but sometimes they, you know, like water runs in different ways and it, it, it would show the results in ways that you may not expect and sometimes are hard to measure too. But once you have it there, you'll feel like you, it's almost like you have another engine to your growth. I like it. It reminds me of what you said earlier about like relationship building, right? You can't, uh, you can't just do one off kind of, uh, you know, signs of affection or friendship, whatever you kind of want to call it and expect, you know, all right, well, I helped Sheena move her in her house four years ago. So she's, you know, we're best friends forever. And she, goes, you know, no, it's like reciprocation <laughs> only goes so far, but it's like, like you said, it's a compounding effect. And as you know, you've been here for a long time at Gong, you've seen it grow and you've seen what raving fandom uh, looks like year over year. It changes, right? As, as our, you know, market matures, as we mature as a company, as the product changes. So yeah, it's been interesting. All right. So um, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit here, Iran. So we gave you a prep doc, but we like to keep one question off of that document to uh, see how you respond. And we ask Lots all of surprises. our guests. Let's do it. Yeah, we ask all our guests this question. So no pressure. Uh, how would you describe sales in one word? Exciting. I like it. Great. Any elaboration on why? Um, I love the fact, and I, I'm, I could not do sales, I don't think, uh, but I love the fact that, um, you know, every month, every quarter starts from, from zero. Um, it's, there's a, a thrill to the hunt, mm -hmm. but I can see how it can get, you know, uh, you know, really difficult mentally. Uh, so maybe that's one of the reasons I'm not doing it. I'm more of a long-term, you know, let's work with customers for the long-term, but the excitement of, you know, getting to the result, getting to the number, 
uh, getting customers to be excited about what's next after the deal closes. I, I have a huge amount of appreciation to, to salespeople everywhere, which is, as I said earlier, I was not as well connected to that part of the organization uh, in my previous roles. And, um, you know, as time goes by, um, I just get more and more excited and appreciative of everything that they do. I love it. It is definitely exciting and fun. And it's a partnership, right? Like you couldn't have the sales without customer success. It's all of it together is what makes that raving fan experience. Well, yeah, and, and I think the biggest thing, it's not everyone is in a closing role, but every single person in the company is doing sales. Whatever you're doing, you're contributing to that. Uh, but yeah, the people at the tip of the spear are the ones who are, you know, going through those motions and going through the highs and lows and uh, high, highly appreciate everything that they're doing. That's uh, crazy exciting. Love it. Well, Aran, thank you again for hanging out with us on this Friday. We appreciate you, and I'm sure our listeners did as well. So thank you for making a raving fan out of us. Thank you for having me. This was fun. Woo.